Hey everyone, how you doing today? We are back with Greg Dickerson for episode number three. How you doing, sir? Doing great. Awesome, man. So hey, last week we kind of touched on inflation and then good old Janet Yellen came out on, I think on Tuesday, right? We talk on Mondays, she came out on Tuesday and it was comical. She basically came out and said, uh, Jerome Powell, you're looking at the wrong stuff. You're wrong. Mm -hmm. And oh, by the way, she said, Biden, uh, you might want to spend a little bit less because uh, we may have a raging inflation problem coming. And then, of course, because of how the system works in D.C., she was beaten up and told not to have an opinion. And, and she had to retract what she said within a 24 hour news cycle. But I believe her. She was like, wow, this this thing can get out of hand. So uh, did you see that? What do you think when she said that? Um, what do you think? Well, you know, she obviously caught our episode and, yeah. you know, listened to what we were saying. So she had to come out Tuesday first thing and say, man, there's inflation. Greg and Michael were talking and we're not watching the right things, guys. Inflation is coming. It's on us. Not only is it coming, it's here. It's on us. So, you know, she just didn't check with everybody first. And then <laughs> after she did that, she went, you know, to work, to the office. And they're yeah. all like, uh, Janet, you know, you yeah. can't do that. You know, yeah. so stay in your you lane. <laughs> Exactly. So what was she doing? What was the whole point of that? So number one, testing the markets. Okay. Mm -hmm. We can't stay on the path we're on. It's unsustainable. Record highs every single day in the markets, record highs in cryptos every single day. Very co-related there. Cryptos in the markets, the same liquidity going in there. Mm -hmm. uh, more retail investors on the crypto side than the stock market, but a lot of retail in the stock market too. So number one, she's sending up the flag saying, look, we're going to put the brakes on yeah. to see how the markets react and how they react. Yeah. You know, as soon as she it's said inflation, we're gonna have to raise rates. You know, the markets, the markets sold off and, you know, sent the signal that, Hey, don't mess with us. Mm -hmm. So she had to come back and retract and qualify what she was saying, but she's, there is a problem. They know it and they don't know how to stop it and they can't stop it. You and I talked about negative rates. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about all these things and, you know, when you think about where we're at from, uh, you know, the standpoint of the markets, housing, stock markets, everything that's going on and the inflation that we're seeing everywhere now, it's not just in assets, you know, months yeah. ago, you and I have been talking about inflation at the asset level. True. Now it's at every level, consumer level. Mm -hmm. It's at the grocery store, it's at the gas pumps, it's at the hardware store, everywhere you go now, clothing, mm -hmm. everything is through the roof. The pandemic is the excuse for inflation everywhere, you know, and it's supply demand vehicles, you know, they're not making vehicles now, <laughs> yeah. you know, the, the um, you know, chip shortage mm -hmm. is creating a problem. So everywhere you turn now, um, there's a shortage, there's a problem, there's a supply chain issue. So we're seeing, you know, inflation just going through the roof at all levels. So she's right, it's here. The only way to stop it is to raise rates. If they do that, the market tanks, crypto and stock market, real estate market will tank. So they're in a pretty bad spot right now because they've got no way out and they've got no way to fix it. And, you know, there, there's a big reckoning coming. Yeah, so it's funny. Um, you're so right, right? And again, I love doing this every week with you. Six, nine months ago, so would that have been? That would have been like last summer, I guess. Mm -hmm. We were talking about asset asset inflation because that's where it was. Mm -hmm. and, and including real estate, obviously, right? We're a real estate channel, but it was it was also in the stock market. Now what we're looking at as we exit, right? I call it exiting the tunnel or the darkness into the light. It's at the consumer level, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you go to a, you know, Home Depot's or Lowe's, or you go to a grocery store, you go to the gas pump, like everything we do all the time, everything is up. And it's not all supply chain. Some of this is, some of this is just a lot of the pent up demand. And I don't see, and then, you know, what's coming next. I just did a report on this today on the daily financial news is, is people are raising wages. So we're going to have wage inflation, which is awesome, which will, well, it will feel awesome until you realize Chipotle and McDonald's and Yum Brands. And these are just companies I talked about today have to raise prices of their burritos, their hamburgers and their tacos. Mm -hmm. Right. Because, you know, Yum Brands and all those folks. they That's already make, happening. When's the last time you've been to one? Uh, I don't eat fast food very often. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, go through just, a drive through You'll be surprised. I mean, you can't get through for less than 10 bucks anymore. Oh my God. Yeah. 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 You get a regular meal. I mean, it's $10. You know, it used to be five, right? Yeah. Yeah. So for, it, it, it's here. And um, I think, I think Janet is right. And of course, Janet, you know, Janet's interesting, right? So first off, in my opinion, Janet Yellen never meant a spending plan. She didn't like, she likes to spend money. 
Uh, Janet mm -hmm. Yellen is what you call a labor economist, which I'm a consumer economist, but she's a labor economist, which really means she only looks at the unemployment, or at least that's her North Star. And, um, you know, it used to be 6%. Now they look at three and a half. I'm like, when did three and a half become a normal economy? I mean, geez, um, gee, my goodness. So yeah, we are in for some um, real inflation because again, companies today can't attract workers. So that what they're trying to do is raise wages and that will feel good in the moment, but uh, we all will pay uh, very soon, I think. Yeah, yeah, they're still battling the whole unemployment bonus. And I know there's a lot of people that say that has no effect on the unemployment, no effect on people not wanting to go back to work. When <laughs> All you gotta do is go look around and every employer will tell you, all of our employees will not come back because they make more on unemployment, you know, than they can than they yeah. can make here. So once that expires, you know, people are going to have to go back to work, and um, you know, hopefully wages will get boosted because you know it's been a long time coming. And sure. you know, ten dollars an hour, fifteen dollars an hour. I mean, at today's rates and you know the cost of living. I mean, that's that's not a good wage. You know, no, no, Liv uh, living very wages difficult to get by. Yeah, living wage is more than ten bucks an hour, fifteen. So I, I again, oh, yeah. I, I mean, think you got to be at twenty, twenty five bucks an hour these days to mm -hmm. you know to to just be able to get by. Yeah. Wages are going to go up. I, I've said it many times recently that the labor has more power today than they've had in any of my investing career. And I think that's a good thing. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great thing. But just realize, you know, when you're paying everybody 15 bucks an hour versus 12, the company is going to have to adjust somewhere. Uh, and that will mean the top line needs to go up. Yeah. And what happens is as prices go up, so here's here's where it's headed. So when we talk about inflation, you talk the, you know about the effects on the economy. How does it work? So as prices go up, movie theaters gas, uh, meals out, people start cutting back because people only have so much disposable income. Yep. They only have so much they can spend eating out, you know, after they pay the bills, you know, there's so much money left over uh, to go spend on, you know, the, uh, you know, discretionary items. So all of that gets cut back and we've seen it before. And it starts at the high end, all your expensive restaurants get hit first, then, you know, your movie theaters get affected, then, you know, next thing you know, um, you know, travel, things like that. People take, you know, the, the travels around the country instead of airlines and things like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's where it starts to affect things. And, it, you know, the Fed has no real way to fight that, you know, other than raising interest rates, you know, sucking liquidity back out of the economy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then the markets are going to collapse and, and, you know, it's, it's going to get real ugly real fast. Yeah. And the other thing we, we, I took away from Janet Yellen's, whoops, I didn't mean what I said, but I really did comment is the stock market will adjust negatively as soon as the powers that be, Treasury, Jerome Powell, even hints that inflation is real, right? Mm -hmm. Jerome Powell has talked about, we are not even thinking about thinking about raising rates. That's kind of his famous quote. Uh, as soon as he says, we're not thinking about raising rates, right? He gets one of those steps of this puzzle taken back. The, market, the stock market will adjust immediately. Uh, real estate will be much, much, much slower to react. But the stock market, as we saw with just a whisper on Tuesday, it will uh, it'll change pretty quick. Yeah. And the only reason he's saying that is because he knows what's going to happen. As soon as they say we're going to have to raise rates, yeah. he knows what's going to happen. It's going to be a huge sell off on Wall Street. You know, it's, it's going to there'll be ripple effects from that comment. What he's waiting for is for the economy to get back open. He's waiting for us to get to the other side of the pandemic. Everybody get back to work. The unemployment, you know, situation to just go away. You know, the jobs report last week is an interesting thing. We'll see what it looks like this week. And, you know, mm -hmm. if we get another one like we did last week, that's really interesting. Maybe the message will start to hit home that maybe we need to get rid of that, you know, unemployment benefit and get people back to work because they can, mm -hmm. you know, get back to work now. Everybody's hiring. Everywhere you go, there's help wanted signs. Yeah. So, you know, it's not because there are no jobs. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's because people don't want to go work. Yeah. You know, where, yeah, I think well, I, I, I say think... they don't want to. I'm just saying it makes more sense not to. Yeah. No, I, again, I actually did some math the other day and a family of four, right? Mom and dad, two kids, right? Say kids are eight to 10 years old. In the current environment, for many people, it makes financial sense. It's a good financial move to both have mom and dad on unemployment, mm -hmm. right? They make about 30K each, which is 60 grand. And oh, by the way, they don't pay a thousand bucks a month in childcare. They don't pay for this. They don't pay for that. They're sitting on more cash now than they've ever had. It, yeah. It's like math, people. Do the math. 
And again, it I makes don't... sense. And you know, and yeah. there are a lot of people that just can't go back to work because schools aren't fully in session. Totally agree. And they have no daycare, you know, no daycare options and things like that. So there is that segment that you know can't go can't. back to work because totally they can't agree. Care of their family. Yeah, I totally. <laughs> the the economy has to open up. You can't open up one piece and leave another piece back, like daycare, right? Just or schools mm-hmm. or whatever, whatever the right answer is. Yeah, if you don't have schools open and daycare options, one parent. And if you're a single parent, I really feel for it. You can't, you can't work. You know, you got a four-year-old at home or, you know, a six-year-old, you're not going to leave him at home as a latchkey kid. Come on. Yeah. It's um, it makes, it's the right move to stay home for lots of people. And I don't begrudge mm-hmm. them. I mean, it's like, yeah, I mean, I get it. It's, it's a weird time. Yeah. Very interesting. So, you know, it's going to be fun to watch and interesting to see how they respond, what they do and when, and how they respond to the market sell-off when it happens. Because yeah. it's, coming. it's coming. And everybody will tell you, you know, it's really funny how they just justify valuations on Wall Street and say, oh, <laughs> these valuations make a lot of sense with today's interest rates. Yeah. Right? Yeah, always watch that with today's interest rates. And yeah, yeah, it's going to change. So any other thoughts on inflation? Because we both know it's here. Uh, it's just not being recognized by the powers that be. I think, I actually think if you gave them truth serum, they'd be like, ooh, we're worried because I don't know if you saw Warren Buffett's comments from his Saturday yearly uh, last Saturday. Oh yeah, he's like inflation is everywhere. I'm like, mm-hmm. I think I'm going to believe Warren Buffett over Jerome Powell. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know, the the Fed they're just in denial because they have to be. They have to um, be because they like, can't. No, they can't raise there. rates. Yeah, you know, they just can't. Ra- they can't pull the foot off the pedal yet because we're not we're not open yet. You know, once we get through this, July, August, September. My guess is they're going to start talking about raising rates before the end of the year. Oh, probably will raise rates before the end of the year. They have to. Oh, wow. I, I think, I think part of, again, one guy's opinion, right? I think they're going to have to be forced to talk about it at the end of the year. I don't see him actually raising a rate to like March or April next year, but just the talking about it's going to send shockwaves through crypto and stock markets. Thing. It's going to All be- right. So yeah. we're, we're going to have to place a bet. Okay. So um, okay. 3 million Dogecoin sales. <laughs> That's funny. No, no. I'll bet you a dollar. Friendly rager. Dollar. <laughs> yeah. One dollar that they that they raise rates before the end of the year, I'm saying. And you're saying that they no. are only going to talk about it, won't raise till next year. Correct. We'll see what happens. Okay. All right, folks. Yeah. Over under. Let us know who you who who you got money on. Uh, you got a raise rates before December 31st, 2021, or after that. Let us know in the comments below. Thanks, buddy. All right, man. Good to see you. Mm-hmm.